Well, happy Easter to everyone. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you guys. I trust that you're in Luke chapter 6 here. This morning as I... Or as I studied the text for this morning, I, I noticed some things in here about community, and I think that Jesus is going to address us as um, members of the Christian community, and so it is with that in mind that we uh, proceed through some of the most popular scriptures of all the Bible. Um, this is part of his Sermon on the Mount, if you will, a Sermon on the Plain, wherever he was standing there in that hilly area, delivering some of the uh, age-old principles for Christian living that some of us in the church have become familiar with over the years. And this morning we're going to be dealing with Christian community, how to live in it, some things for us to consider. And in starting, I want to tell you something that uh, may or may not surprise you, but the Facebook community, of which many of you belong, boasts 1.591 billion members. Billion. How many of you don't have a Facebook account? Never have, never will. Hang in there, you guys. <laughs> Stay strong. 1.591 billion members, and that community is fast growing. The number of U.S. members is projected to double in a year and a half. And if that growth rate happened all over the world, well then, within a year and a half, almost half of the entire planet will be part of the Facebook community. That boggles my mind. Half the planet. Now the problem with the Facebook community is that it hardly fits the definition of community. That's the problem. Community is built on relationships, and let me give you a little bit of an example of how the Facebook community deals with relationships. The average U.S. female, I'm not picking on you guys, but I'm picking on you guys. The average U.S. female has 250 Facebook friends. Some of you are like, wow, 250, that's a lot. Some of you are like, 250? <laughs> the average Facebook user spends 20 minutes a day on the site. That means that relationships, if you want to call them that, in the Facebook community have been reduced to no more than 4.8 seconds of hangout time per day. That's your friend. You're their friend. Friend to you means 4.8 seconds. And current data strongly suggests that it won't be long before half of the human race will have reduced friendship to the clicking of a small plastic button and the touching of handheld screens. That's relationship in the Facebook community. Boo! Boo, Boo Facebook! Boo. Right, guys? Boo. <laughs> yeah, no. Listen, this isn't a commentary on Facebook. This is a commentary on community. And what Jesus is teaching in this passage is being taught to members, new members of a very authentic Christian community. If you remember last week, we were talking about how he is talking and addressing specifically his disciples, his students, those in the masses who had stepped forward to become part of what would be a very unique community, a very new but vibrant Christian community. So he's addressing those community members. And some people in the Christian world, just like then, have a hard time with community. And I mean authentic community. So most of you, the majority of you, have no problem with superficial, shallow, going nowhere community, aka Facebook. But many of us, when it comes to the authentic Christian community type, we have a hard time with that because we're more hermit-like than we would rather admit. And I will be the first to throw myself under the bus. I have a great amount of hermitude in, built into my care. If you, I don't even, that's not a word, I don't think. But I have that. Okay, what are hermits? Well, they're loners. That's what they are, if you're familiar with the term. Homebodies, if you want to call them that. Antisocial, reclusive, introverted types who avoid community because relationships are hard and people are scary. Amen. Right, amen. 
And I think that's a lot of us. I think a lot of us kind of revert to Facebook because that's easier. That's where the bulk of our friends lie. That's the extent of many of our friendships. That's the depth of many of the relationships we have in the real world because that's all we can handle. The reason the whole world, or at least by 2018, half of it is letting itself do relationships that way via Facebook is because it's easier and it's safer. And, and again, I think you and I are far more prone to doing what's easiest than what we'd like to admit. And relationships are no exception. And yet God, Jesus, here is calling us into vibrant, authentic Christian community. And so this message is for the hermit in all of us. Get it? This message is for the hermit in you. I hope he feels like total junk when this message is over. Because he should. This is for the one who wants to reject or redefine Christian community and how it works. Because none of us get to redefine it. Christian community happens the way Jesus directs or it doesn't happen at all. Anything else is inauthentic, Christian. And so Jesus here is teaching us this morning. Look at verse 37. He's teaching us about authentic Christian community, how it's supposed to happen, what it's supposed to look like, and he starts with this. Judge not, and you won't be judged. Condemn not, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give generously, and you will get. And he goes on and tells us and what way, shape, and form that takes place. But he gives us, he, start, he launches into this with four specific instructions for you and I if we're to live and abide by authentic Christian principles. Four simple instructions. Notice, two of them negative, two of them positive. Two of them don't do this and that. Two of them positive. Do this and do that. The first two negative, don't judge, don't condemn. Don't condemn people. Don't judge others. He says, give to one another. Forgive one another. None of those commands, of those four commands, not a single one of them can be obeyed in isolation. You understand that? Not a single one of those commands can be obeyed if you live as a hermit. It's assumed, Jesus, but they're in community already. That's why he's telling them this. He's, he's speaking to the disciples who are now living in Christian community and he tells them what to do because he assumes that they're living in this new kind of community. He says, don't judge, don't condemn. Give. Be generous. Be a forgiving individual. Guys, one thing about Christian community is that it demands that you meet the other members of it with love and respect. And I'll go further and say, even the irritating ones, the needy ones, and the ones who hurt you. You get that? So be brave, get out of your hermitude, surround yourself with imperfect Christians. Some Christians who try to live in community are so picky about who they live in community with that they never really get around to living in community. Do you follow me on this? You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that in the real world or in the Christian world. Like, you can pick where you live, but you can't choose your neighbors. Have you ever heard that one? Some of you guys, you're like, yeah, I know that. I live with, I mean, my neighbors are terrible. It's like, that's how it is in the Christian community. You can decide where you're going to go to church, but you don't get to decide who you go to church with. And yet we can become so picky when it comes to that. And so Jesus goes, no, if you don't like the people you go to church with, then that's perfect because now you have an opportunity to obey the commands I just gave you in verses 37 and 38. Don't judge people when everything in you wants to judge them. Like that verse can only be obeyed when you want to judge people. The don't condemn verse can only be obeyed when everything in you wants to tell him to go to hell. Right? Don't do it. The, the forgive one another verse only comes into play when you've been sinned against. That means you have to be in community with people who sin against you. It's kind of a requirement. You have to be done wrong sometimes in order to obey Jesus in all areas. Like, if you're supposed to give and be generous about it, then that means you need to surround yourself in Christian community with people who are needy 
and ask you for stuff. That's kind of how this works. And so what hermits do is they try to just kind of like live away from the church and not really participate too deeply in the church for fear that somebody actually might want something from me. Like, I don't want to get in too deep because the church might start asking things of me. Like, I heard that people serve around there. God help me. I don't want to serve. Like, I, 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 that means participate. That means like give a little of my time. Uh-uh. And so you're still a hermit. You don't want to pitch in. You don't want to be involved. And God's going, I'm waiting for the day that you get around to obeying me. Yeah, but Lord, I go to church. And he's like, okay, you got one point covered. What about the other nine million? You go to church. Oh, going to church is not the same as living in Christian community. I hope you know that. Don't think that you've got an A-plus on your report card just because you showed up today. And some people are like, well, this is the day that I show up every year. Like, and if this isn't enough, then are you asking me to show up all the time? Because I mean, that means 52 Sundays every... Listen, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you to quit being a hermit. That's all. Just trying to help. Just trying to help. See, because the picture here is a perfect illustration of the way some people live. They live in a little shack close enough to the church to make themselves believe that they're part of the church when they live in a dilapidated shack. And some people are going to feel like, feel like they're in with God because they show up to church on Easter Sunday because they've gotten close enough to the church and the people of the church to make themselves feel like they're included when they're still living a ramshackle life that can't get anything together and is as distant as it possibly can be from authentic Christian living. So, I'm glad that you came here this morning and I'm, you know, pleased to have visitors and stuff. But just understand one thing. Showing up to church is not what God is after. He's after something far deeper than that. Far deeper than that. Let's move on in verse 39. And he spoke a parable to them. We love parables. <laughs> They're easy to understand. They're kind of fun. And here's Jesus' parable for us this morning. Can the blind lead the blind? I guess the answer to that is yes. They could, like technically. But then he says, will they not both fall into the ditch? And the answer is, I guess so. In verse 40 he says, and now he's, he's coupling these two ideas together. Okay, so in like manner, he's saying, a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So if the teacher you're following and believing is blind, then guess where you're headed? You're headed for the ditch. So not only should we be an authentic Christian community, but we should also be paying attention to who is te the kind of teaching that's being funneled through that community. Right? Because whatever Christian community you become a part of, you'll become like a citizen of that community. You will become part of that group. You will adopt to those teachings. You will become like they are. So just like becoming part of any community, I think it's important to learn the ways of that community, right? Like if you're moving to another part of the country or a new, new city or something like that, you probably want to know a little bit about the city or the country you're moving to or wherever it is. You want to know its history, where it's been, what it's founded on, its philosophies, notable figures in that community, its practices. And then find your place in that community by conforming to its standards. We all do. If you won't conform to the standards of the community in which we live, you know what they call you? Criminal. That's what they call you. People who don't conform to the standards of the community are called criminals. And so too in the Christian community. If it's to be authentic, we're obligated to find out how it works and to learn from others how to conduct ourselves within that framework. And so Jesus here is saying, that's a given, but you need to be careful of who you're learning from then. Make sure that your teachers and the ones that influence you are actually part of the community you're trying to involve yourself with. Did you know that every one of us in here, everyone in this room, is learning how to do Christianity from someone else? 
Every one of you, without exception, you say, well, not me. I'm learning it from Jesus himself. Like, I'm becoming like Christ. I'm being conformed into his image. He's the one. Yeah, but the problem with that is that nobody in here is going to be fully like Jesus until they're dead. And so until then, you're going to become like somebody else, at least partially. Yeah, you're becoming like Jesus, or at least I hope you are, but you're also becoming like other people, and they're probably in this room if you go to this church. We're becoming like each other. We're learning from one another. Nobody in here is themselves. Like, just be yourself. Like, that's impossible. When you're yourself, you're a conglomerate of a bunch of other people and influences. Everyone, without exception. People do life the way that they've seen it done. I've, I just offended your sense of individuality.